What do ancient paths, bustling trade routes, and a cutting-edge railway tunnel have in common? They're all part of humanity's quest to conquer the Alps. So if you step into a time machine and witness travelers' struggles across these mountains over millennia, from weeks-long journeys to a mere two-hour trip, it's easy to see how far humanity has come. The $26 billion Mont Dambien base project is the latest chapter in this epic saga. From alpine crossings and rugged trails to what is now the world's longest 57.5 kilometer underground marvel, you'll discover how each era's innovations shaped our travel, trade, and society. But what if I told you the reason this tunnel is breaking records has nothing to do with engineering ambition, and the unexpected cause behind it will leave you speechless? From the time of Hannibal to the age of modern highways, the Alps have presented a daunting challenge to travelers, subjecting them to the biting cold, treacherous ice, and howling winds. The Romans, master road builders, established the first reliable routes through these mountains and remain engineering marvels until this day. One of the Romans' greatest achievements was the Via Domitia Road that linked Italy to Gaul and became a vital trade artery for military personnel and traders, with the road continuing to influence modern Alpine construction. Then came the great military genius, Napoleon, recognizing the strategic importance of Alpine passes, invested heavily in road improvements in between 1802 and 1810, Napoleon's army followed Roman ingenuity with the construction of two mountain passes. First, the great St. Bernard Pass, which has been used since Roman times with Napoleon, ordering significant improvements, making it easier to travel for his military campaigns, especially during his famous crossing in 1800 before the Battle of Marengo. Second was the construction of the Mont Ceni Pass over Mont Ceni, turning what was once a rough mountain path into a fully engineered route capable of handling heavy military and trade traffic. But the real game changer came in the late 19th century with tunneling technology. The Frejus Rail Tunnel, opened in 1871, pioneered a new era of alpine crossings and is still in use today, which is a testament to those 19th century engineers' ingenuity. There's a catch, though. While the Frejus Tunnel was revolutionary, it's beginning to show its age. And although some modern trains can still fit, the tunnel's loading gauge is limited to 3.68 meters in width, 12.07 feet, and 4.28 meters in height, 14.04 feet, significantly restricting which trains can pass through compared to newer tunnels. On top of this, a recent landslide in the Morian Valley temporarily shut down the route, serving as a stark reminder that even our most impressive engineering feats have limitations. And those limitations are becoming increasingly apparent. Around 3 million heavy vehicles cross the French-Italian Alps each year, with half squeezing through the Italian city of Ventimiglia on narrow mountain roads. This, you can imagine, causes serious headaches. Traffic congestion is just the beginning. These heavy vehicles are taking a toll on the environment, spewing emissions into pristine alpine air. Add in noise pollution and strain on local communities, and it's clear our current system of alpine crossings is under pressure. How is this monumental problem being addressed? A long, low-elevation, 57.5-kilometer tunnel passage cutting straight through the mountains. The tunnel is flatter, faster, and more efficient than its high-altitude counterparts and will carry loads up to 1,500 tons, more than double the current maximum of 700 tons. This massive boost in freight capacity may not involve war elephants, but its impact on alpine crossings could be just as transformative. We start our journey here in the Morienne Valley, France, where twin tubes, each with an internal diameter of 8.4 meters, wide enough to fit a Boeing 747 airplane, will stretch an incredible 57.5 kilometers until it reaches the Souza Valley in Italy. These dimensions are designed to accommodate high-speed passenger trains zipping along at speeds of up to 220 kilometers per hour, while freight trains will cruise at a respectable 100 kilometers per hour. But how on earth do you dig a tunnel this long through some of the harshest terrain on the planet? Well, you bring in the cavalry. Yep, that's right. Seven tunnel boring machines will be used to carve through the high pressure rock formations. And who do you think the Italians and French are sourcing these colossal tunnel boring machines from? The Germans, of course. Located in Schwanau, Germany, 
The company Heron Connect was founded in 1977 by Martin Heron Connect. And over the decades, this company has become a world leader in manufacturing tunneling technology, specializing in hard rock formations, micro tunneling, underwater projects, mixed shield tunneling, and more. Their tunnel boring machines have powered some of the most ambitious tunneling projects in the world. From the Gotthard Base Tunnel in Switzerland, completed in 2016 and stretching 57.1 kilometers, to the Channel Tunnel, which opened in 1994 and spans 50.45 kilometers beneath the English Channel. Then there's the Brenner Base Tunnel, another Alpine mega project located between Austria and Italy, and will be scheduled for completion in 2032 with the main tunnel section spanning 55 kilometers. These engineering marvels wouldn't be possible without Heron Connect's cutting edge technology, shaping the future of underground transportation. Heron Connect produced a 10.4 meter diameter gripper, TBM, weighing 3,200 tons and measuring 334 meters in length. This machine is responsible for excavating an 18 kilometer section of one of the twin tunnels, starting near Moden, France, and extending all the way to the Clarea underground safety site in Italy. However, even the most advanced tunnel boring machines need a well-organized team behind them. That responsibility falls on Elliott Consortium and Telt, the key players driving the project forward and managing a project of this scale takes more than just powerful machinery. It requires expert oversight and precise execution. La Torino Lione va inquadrata in chiave europea, collegamenti rapidi per un continente più unito. Tell, the Tunnel Euralpin Lion Turin organization is the binational authority overseeing the entire cross-border section and are responsible for project coordination, ensuring everything stays on schedule and meets international safety and environmental standards. They handle the big picture planning, funding, and collaboration between France and Italy. But when it comes to the actual tunnel excavation, that's the job of the Elliott Consortium, a powerhouse team of engineering firms, including Efage Genie Civil, Spibatniol, Gela, and Kojei. Their role? Operating the massive tunnel boring machines, managing the workforce, and reinforcing the structure as they carve through the Alps. Together, these two organizations are turning this ambitious vision into reality, laying the groundwork for Europe's next great high-speed rail corridor. Of course, there's more to it than meets the eye, because digging a tunnel from two different locations and making sure both ends meet perfectly isn't just a fun guessing game. It's sheer skill, planning, and mathematical precision. To pull it off, engineers rely on advanced navigation and surveying technology. It all starts with GPS and geodetic surveying, which creates a highly detailed 3D map of the terrain, ensuring the tunnel follows the right path. Laser guidance systems inside the tunnel continuously measure and adjust the TBM's direction in real time, keeping them on course. But since GPS doesn't work deep underground, gyroscopic alignment systems and inertial navigation systems take over. These tools track the TBM's movement with extreme precision, preventing any deviation. Companies like Heron Connect's VMT, Honeywell Aerospace, and Exhale provide these cutting-edge solutions, while the consortium handles the excavation. In the Gotthard Base Tunnel, the final breakthrough was only 8 centimeters off after drilling from both sides, in almost perfect alignment. That's the level of precision required for the Mont Dambin Base Tunnel to succeed, proving that modern tunneling is as much about accuracy as it is about power. Ventilation is another crucial aspect, at 500 meters underground, fresh air doesn't come easy. The tunnel will include vertical ventilation shafts drilled using raised boring machines that extend more than half a kilometer deep. Constructing these shafts involves an incredibly precise process. First, a small pilot hole is drilled from the surface of the mountain down to the tunnel level. Once it reaches the desired depth, a reamer head is attached at the tunnel level and pulled upward gradually enlarging the hole to its full diameter as it ascends toward the surface. This upward reaming process allows the excavated material to fall naturally to the tunnel floor, making removal easier and minimizing surface disruption. The raised boring method is favored for its safety and accuracy as it reduces the risk of ground instability compared to traditional downward excavation techniques. By constructing these vertical shafts with such precision, Engineers ensure a continuous supply of fresh air, 
which is essential for both operational efficiency and the safety of workers deep underground. It's like building an upside-down skyscraper, all to keep the air flowing for high-speed trains and maintenance crews working beneath the Alps. The payoff for all this innovation and engineering prowess? A non-stop journey from Lyon to Turin will take just one hour and 47 minutes compared to the current three hours and 47 minutes. That's two hours saved every trip. Multiply that by thousands of passengers and hundreds of freight shipments daily, and you start to see the immense impact. Imagine hauling up to 1,500 tons of goods that doubles the current capacity through the Mont Dombien base tunnel. This isn't just an upgrade, it's a freight revolution poised to transform trade between France and Italy, two of Europe's largest economies. In 2023 alone, France imported $8.25 billion worth of machinery and $6.59 billion worth of vehicles from Italy, making efficient transport routes crucial. Currently, goods like electronics, pharmaceuticals, textiles, agricultural products, and industrial materials move through the Alps using a mix of road and rail transport. Trucks dominate freight movement, with tunnels like Freyus handling up to 80% of commercial road traffic. However, the new tunnel aims to shift much of this freight to rail, reducing road congestion and cutting CO2 emissions by around 1 million tons annually. While passenger travel will also benefit, cutting the journey from Turin to Lyon from nearly four hours to under two, the tunnel's primary focus is freight. By removing over a million trucks from Alpine roads each year, this project is set to create a cleaner, faster, and more efficient trade route between France and Italy. Of course, all this comes at a monumental price of $26 billion, which is enough to make anyone's jaw drop. But the audacious France, Italy, and the entire European Union are convinced this massive investment will reshape the economic landscape of an entire continent. First, let's break down where all this money's coming from. The European Union is footing 40% of the bill for the cross-border section, including our star player, the Mont Damban base tunnel. Italy's throwing in 35%, and France is covering the remaining 25%. But with the price tag skyrocketing to $26 billion, it's not just about the numbers. Opposition from environmental groups and local communities has shaped the project in ways that can't be ignored. Not everyone is on board with this project. Environmental groups like Cipro and Mountain Wilderness have voiced serious concerns about the tunnel's impact on the Alps. The biggest issues? Disrupting fragile ecosystems, disturbing hazardous materials like asbestos and uranium, and altering the region's water systems. And they didn't just complain, they took action. After years of protests, including major demonstrations in the Susa Valley, engineers were forced to rethink their approach. And by 2023, the tunnel's design was changed, extending it from 52 kilometers to 57.5 kilometers, allowing for deeper underground roading to minimize surface disruption. Ironic, right? The Mont Dambin Base Tunnel will become the world's longest tunnel all because of some committed protesters in the Sousa Valley. With all the protests and opposition, most recognize the benefits will outweigh the initial costs. And it's very clear why. A cleaner alternative to road and air travel and less traffic congestion in the Alps as freight shifts from trucks to trains. It's about reshaping how we think about transportation across an entire continent by providing real competition to air travel for both business and pleasure, knitting the continent closer together, one rail line at a time. The Mont Damban base tunnel isn't just another infrastructure project. It's a testament to human ingenuity, reshaping trade and tourism between France and Italy as part of Europe's vision for sustainable transportation. The EU's significant funding commitment shows its transformative potential. But why stop here? As we bore through mountains, what other impossible barriers might we overcome? Could this tunnel be our bridge into tomorrow, paving the way for even more ambitious projects? What do you think? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. Don't forget to like this video, and if you found it interesting, subscribe for more mind-blowing engineering stories and hit that notification bell so you never miss an update. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.